Good morning and welcome to this week's virtual midweek masterclass. Um, today's subject is making money whilst you sleep with automated email. Uh, my name is Steve White. I'm managing director at Red Sea. This is my colleague, Abby Hall, um, email developer extraordinaire. Abby been with the company for, for five years. Um, and we just had a chat actually just prior to the session. Um, we think, we estimate um, that we probably do around between 500 and 600 emails every year. So um, we know our stuff when it comes to email marketing. Um, so Red Sea, we're a fully integrated agency based in Manchester. As I mentioned, we do an awful lot of email marketing for clients such as Eurostar, um, Jessup's, Axo Noble, uh, Dulux, Dulux Trade, um, Swinton Insurance, Man City Football Club. Um, so yeah, as I said, we've done an awful lot of automated emails over the years. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we're gonna kick start with a presentation. Share my screen, bear with me. Okay, so making money while you sleep with automated email, as I mentioned, is today's topic. So, yes, we've delivered clicks for, for many clients over the years. These are some of our present and past clients, uh, Man City Football Club, Lakeland, Jessup's, Dulux Trade, Dulux. We've delivered hardworking um, blast and newsletters, but also automated emails over the years um, using various different software um, and various different sectors. So um, hopefully some of the things that we talk about today will, will register with you guys um, and be relevant. So Warren Buffett, um, one of the world's um, richest men once said, if you don't find a way to make money whilst you sleep, you will work until you die. And that is fundamentally one of the things that I love about automated emails. It literally can make you money whilst you sleep. Um, and it can also save you money whilst you sleep as well, um, which I'm going to talk about during the course of today's presentation. So today's masterclass, um, we're going to talk about what is email automation. I think that should be the starting point. Um, we're going to talk about why automate. Why, as a business, should you introduce automated emails into your marketing mix? Does automation work? It's all very well me saying, you know, it's great, but does it actually work? Does it actually bring in ROI? What do you need to automate? Again, all very well me saying you should be doing X, Y, and Z, but what do you actually need to make this happen? And then also Abby and I will be talking you through some great examples of automated emails that we believe that you should be doing. So what is email automation? Well, quite simply, um, as opposed to your common garden newsletter or one-off campaign that you create and send to a whole list of people in one go, an automated campaign, also known as a triggered campaign, is set up once and then sent to a particular individual when that person meets a, a certain trigger or, or business rule. Um, automated emails, when done correctly, you know, they should, in theory, be more relevant. They should be a more relevant communication as you're sending a more relevant message to a more relevant person at a more relevant time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, once you set the email up once and then more people continue to meet the trigger that you, de you defined, um, the email will be continually sent out without you having to lift a finger. Um, so fundamentally, it's automated marketing. Um, so why automate? Uh, well, apart from making money uh, and saving money whilst you sleep, uh, we've kind of regarded it as, as being very much a, a no brainer, really. Um, but one of the major reasons why we believe email automation is an absolute must is customers absolutely love customers. Uh, sorry, customers absolutely love personalization in, in all of its forms. Um, and some stats to back that view up. 90% 90, 90 of consumers find personalization content very or somewhat appealing. 91% of consumers are more likely to engage with businesses that provide individual recommendations or offers. Personalized messages based on their activity on site results on their click-through rates increasing by 
and revenue grew by 38%. 72% of consumers only respond to marketing messages that, that target their individual interests. Um, we all know as marketeers that, you know, whenever we do a more relevant message or more relevant um, communication, our KPIs increase. So automated emails is fundamentally that, a more personalized message. The other thing it does is it increases employee productivity. Um, you know, if you take, if you just do newsletters or email blasts, by definition, you are creating something new day in, day out. But with an automated campaign, you only need to create that campaign once. You may need to update it once every, every six months or so, um, but you're creating that campaign once and it just sits in the background, ticking over, making you money, um, generating engagement, uh, reducing churn, whatever the business objective might be for that particular email campaign. Again, some stats to support this view. 69% said automation helped reduce with, uh, wasted time. 59% said they could save at least six hours a week if the repetitive aspects of their job um, were no longer. Um, and 70% said they would use their time, the time they saved to focus on higher value work. So by reducing the amount of time that you spend creating emails on a day by day basis, it gives your marketing team time to do other things that might be adding more value to the business. So does automation work? Absolutely it does. Um, again, it's an absolute no brainer. So does automation work? Yes, it does. 100% better open rates when you compare a triggered email to a blast email, report campaign monitor. Does email automation work? Yes, it does. Triggered emails generate four times more um, open rates, higher open rates than newsletters, report expert sander. Does all email automation work? Yes, it does. Triggered emails are 42% more likely to be clicked than newsletter campaigns, um, report uh, Vero. Um, do email automation campaigns work? Yes, they do. Uh, marketeers who use triggered emails report conversion rates of up to 50% um, increase, report campaign monitor. Um, and as you know, as a business, as an individual, that's done an awful lot of automated emails over the last decade, uh, 15 years. Um, that ages me, doesn't it? Um, you know, we see all of our automated campaigns, they just do generate better KPIs than, than blast emails because they are more relevant. Um, so yeah, we they, they work awesome. <laughs> So what do you need to implement uh, an automated email program? Um, well, fundamentally, you need two things. The first thing you need is data. And you, this comes in different forms, as we all know. But you need data to be able to send these more relevant emails. So the data could be demographic data. You know, where are they from? How old are they? Are they male? Are they female? What sector do they operate in if you happen to be B2B? Purchase behavior could dictate a automated campaign. What did they buy? What didn't they buy? How often do they buy? How much do they spend? So that sort of criteria can trigger off several different marketing campaigns. Engagement data is also something that could be used to, to trigger off different campaigns. Are they engaging with your brand? And if so, how? Um, or if so, or if not, why not? Um, so there's lots of different pieces of data that can trigger off a different type of campaign. And when we go through the examples later, hopefully it will become clear what type of data is triggering off which campaign. The other thing that you absolutely do need is email software, um, or two different types of software in actual fact. You need CRM data um, or CRM software to manage your data. Uh, but you'll also need software to create and send your emails, um, your marketing automation software. Um, and for those that they don't quite know what that means, let me just give you some examples. So in my view, there are three options when it comes to finding a solution to enable you to do this. The first solution um, would be having marketing automation, but with built-in CRM. Um, so there are many email automation tools out there in the market. 
most of you may have heard of MailChimp, um, which is a pretty much an off the shelf email automation tool. All it does come with is a relatively basic CRM tool built in. Um, so you only need the one tool in that example or option. In option two, um, you may well need, you may have a, a CRM tool, um, but CRM tools do come with uh, marketing automation built in. So an example of that would be Microsoft Dynamics. Um, it's fundamentally a CRM tool, um, but it does have email automation built into it. The third option would be marketing automation integrated with CRM. So you may already have an email automation tool, a MailChimp, a campaign monitor, a, a dot mailer, whatever it happens to be. Um, or you may have a CRM program already in place, a piece of software. What I would, but what you can often do is integrate the two pieces of software together. Um, so it fundamentally creates one tool. Um, what I would advise you do is either speak to your account manager at your email automation tool, um, or potentially speak to your account manager at your CRM software um, and see what the vice versa can potentially link together. For example, MailChimp integrates very well with the CRM tool Salesforce. Um, so yeah, see what your account managers say. I'm gonna pass you over to um, Abby now, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit about design tips for automated emails. Yeah, thank you. So now Steve's gone through a lot of the strategy side of things. I'm here to talk through some design and through some good examples of these automated emails. So first of all, the obvious stuff, you really need to make sure your automated emails are on brand. Your recipient is going to have a lot of emails in their inbox. So you want to know that when they open this email, they know straight away that it's from you. Secondly, you do need to make sure you're designing for all devices. We often kick around to mobile first in our industry, but given the fact that we use our mobile phones so often daily now, we need to make sure that mobile design and even tablet design isn't an afterthought. And then the less obvious stuff, you need to make them the best they can be. These emails might be trying to rescue a customer from leaving, or you might, might, you might be trying to make a good first impression. So you want to make sure you do that. You should be creative and have some fun. At Red Sea, if we're given a new design, we often give two templates to our clients. We give a sort of safer template that they're more used to seeing, and then we give a more creative template. And more often than not, that creative one always wins on results. Um, so we would recommend going down that route and being more creative. And finally, don't overcomplicate your template because it's likely at some point in the future you'll have to update this. Maybe something in your business has changed and you don't want to make too much of a big job there. Brilliant. Just to go back to be creative and have fun, I think that's a really important point there. Um, quite often with many automated campaigns, you're trying to reverse a trend, a negative trend quite often. It might be you know, a reactivation campaign or a re-engagement campaign. So quite often you're having to maybe look at doing something a little bit different to the norm because you're looking to reverse the trend or the behavior of a particular customer set. So by definition, doing something different can quite often be doing something a bit fun, a bit different, um, a bit novel. Um, so but we've got some great examples of that a little bit later down, down the line. So without further ado, um, what are the must do automated emails? Um, so we've got, I think maybe 10 automated emails that we would recommend you take a look at, obviously depending on your sector. Um, so without further ado, we have our first email, our first must do automated email, which is the welcome email. Um, so what is a welcome email? Well. It's an email that welcomes a new customer to your brand. Um, so you may, 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 may have made your first ever purchase and this email is the first email that you receive on the back of that, that transaction with a new brand. Um, and this is an important point. Being the fact that it's the first email, you need to make first impressions count. Make sure that this email is the best it can be because ultimately you want people to continually open your emails and if you make a good first impression, you're giving yourselves a good chance for that to happen. Does it work? Absolutely, it works. Um, welcome emails can deliver uh, open rates of 91% and click-through rates of, of, of around 26% report hive.co. 
In VESP report that welcome emails can deliver 320 cents more revenue than other promotional emails. Again, it's down to the relevancy. Someone has just done something positive, you're hitting them with a, with a relevant message at a relevant time to a relevant person, hence why the KPIs are so positive. When should you send it? Um, well, immediately after someone triggers the business rule, i.e. makes a purchase, uh, becomes a new customer, or indeed a subscriber. You want to hit them with that email straight away. So some tips um, about creating a welcome email. Um, keep it simple. Um, don't try to cram too much into that first communication. Welcome email should be clear and concise. Um, you're bringing a new person or business into your brand to be warm and welcoming uh, by using a, you know, a conversational tone. Don't be too salesy with that first communication. Provide next steps. Outline what the recipient should do next. This might include some advice about a recently purchased product, how to use that product well, um, or, or what, to, um, what to maybe to add to that product in the future. Um, maybe some information about the brand um, and, and what to expect moving forward. How about a perk? Uh, quite often, um, you know, with a welcome program, you would offer the customer, the new customer um, or subscriber, a promotional offer, um, such as a discount or something of value, maybe a piece of content, um, kind of wrapped around the idea of being a welcome gift. Um, yeah, this person has a positive, warm feeling about you as a brand because I've just purchased something. So it's a positive moment in, in your relationship. So potentially you could build upon that by giving them a second reason to to engage with you in a positive manner. So this is a nice example of a welcome email that we worked on for our client Police Mutual last year. Um, this template is dynamic, so the text and the cross-sell messages are determined by the product the recipient has purchased. So that essentially means if they bought home insurance, they're going to receive a car insurance cross-sell and vice versa. Fundamentally, it's just a welcome message, but we've supported it with some information about their policy and then some cross-sell messages, as we mentioned. And you'll see at the top there, we've got the line, welcome aboard first name. So that would be, for example, welcome aboard Steve. And if we circle back to what Steve just told us about trying to use a warm and welcoming conversational tone, that's exactly what we tried to do there. With using their first name, we've just made it that little bit more personal. Brilliant, thank you, Abby. So the next must do automated emails would be what we kind of regard to be called the welcome program or the onboarding email program. Um, it generally follows on from, from the welcome email, um, but it's a series of emails that look to maximize a customer's early relationship with, with your brand after their, their initial purchase. Um, you know, that initial period of time when someone's just made a purchase is often referred to as a honeymoon period. Um, and it can often benefit both the business, but also the customer if you do an onboarding program well. How many onboarding emails should you send your, your new customer? In our experience, we generally would recommend our clients send around three to five emails. We have sent less, we have sent more, but generally on average, we would send between three and five emails. When would you send um, onboarding emails? Well, I think the, the first onboarding email um, would follow maybe two or three days after you, know, you send the customer that first welcome email. And this would be you know, a, a relatively standard journey that we might take a, a new customer through the, their onboarding experience. So day one, that customer would receive a, a thank you for your recent purchase email and, and welcome to the brand. Onboarding one might be um, value added content, uh, providing some value to the customer's experience, an offer, um, some information, some tips, how to use the product, that sort of thing. Maybe day four, day five, um, we send onboarding two. Um, and this may be a, a, an opportunity for us to introduce some new products or services into the conversation, um, giving us the opportunity to upsell and potentially cross sell. Day six or seven, we invite the customer to maybe leave a review about their recent experience with us as a brand, about their product, or indeed us as a, as a brand. Um, day 18 um, or up to 19, potentially, um, onboarding four, recommend a friend. 
Um, it's a great opportunity to potentially get your, your new customer talking about you to friends and family and, and, and peers. So the next must do automated email is based on demographic data. Um, quite clearly, it's based on the year in which someone was born or the date in which someone was born, should I say. So what is it? Well, quite, quite clearly, quite obviously, it's, a, it's an e-birthday card. We all get them. We're all signed up to, to e-commerce retailers, et cetera. We all got them. We'll you'll get them. They're part of the standard automated email marketing mix. When would you send an email birth, um, e e birthday card? Well, it kind of depends a little bit on the sector. Um, but generally, we, we tend to send these emails out a few days, maybe even up to a week prior to the person's birthday. Because quite often, the birthday e-card has an offer. And obviously, you generally want them to use that as part of their, their birthday celebrations. You know, treat yourself for your birthday, that sort of thing. So an example of this um, would be an email that I'm still proud of um, uh, still today. It's an email that we did for Man City Football Club um, quite a few years back now, but it still holds up. Um, it's a very, very personalised email. Um, we work really hard to make the experience as personalised as it possibly can be. Um, so for those that are football fans, that's Joe Hart um, in the top image there. We use Joe Hart for this particular email because Jonathan um, actually selected Joe Hart as being his favourite player as part of the preferences. So therefore, we personalise the communication. Um, but another fan may have picked Sergio Aguero. So therefore, they would have had Sergio Aguero um, wishing that person a happy birthday, Vincent Company, and, and so forth. The other thing that we did, which really took it to the next level, was... We took the birthday, the year, or the year in which that person was born, and we selected three um, facts about City from that year. So this particular person, Jonathan, was born in 1954, um, and we went away and researched for every year from about 1940, I think it was, all the way through to 2013, something like that, um, and selected facts from those years. So these facts were from from the year 1954. Um, this particular email was part of the whole Manchester City email program, it was actually recognised by e-consultancy um, as being top of the league when it came to um, emails sent out by, by Premier League football clubs. So here we've got another example of a birthday email, and this is from Bowden, who we think are really great email marketers. They actually send their customers a half birthday email which is something a little bit different. Um, they have a quite a simple design here, but we think they get away with that, given the fact that the creativity is kind of within the concepts of this half birthday. Mm -hmm. We've got some creative copy, um, and they've got a very clear and concise call to action there. And they've even got a little dog with some sunglasses on down in the right corner. So what isn't this like about this email? Um, a tip from us, you should definitely sign up to the Bowden emails because they have some great emails and some good inspiration for you to see. Absolutely. Even if you're in B2B marketing, I would still recommend that you sign up for Bowden. Um, yeah, they never do a bad email <laughs> or <laughs> actually do anything bad at all from an, a marketing perspective, both on and offline. So um, get yourself signed up to um, Bowden email marketing. We miss you. Um, must do um, automated email number four uh, would be a re-engagement email. Um, so this is sent to people that haven't engaged with any emails for a, a predefined period of time, not to be mistaken with a reactivation email that is triggered by a lack of transactional behavior. This is purely based on someone not engaging with you as a brand via email marketing. So why is this important? Well, quite a damning um, stat here. Only 38% of people unsubscribe from emails they no longer wish to receive. Um, so 62% of people just literally don't respond and just let you know, the, the, the brand continually send you email despite you not being interested in what they have to say. Um, this is bad because ultimately sending emails to non-engaged people, uh, members of your data file, will ultimately end in your reputation as an email sender being damaged, um, to possibly even to the point where you're blacklisted by Hotmail, Gmail, Outlook. So it's a very 
risky risky practice and it's something that we would recommend we do understand um it is quite a difficult thing to come to terms with you've worked hard to generate this data and accumulate this data but ultimately it's not doing you any favors apart from potentially your ego that you've got this massive pool of data but there's no benefit sending non-engaged people uh businesses um your emails if they're not engaging when should you send it well this should really kind of be sent uh, or triggered uh, by inactivity over a certain period of time or by a certain number of emails that they've not responded to. Um, we tend to do a mix of both. So if someone hasn't opened an email for, say, X period of time um, and they've also been sent um, X number of emails, that would be the business rule that triggers the re-engagement programme. A re-engagement program would normally consist of around three to five emails. And, and ultimately what you're trying to do is generate an open. Um, because that's fundamentally what you're trying to do is distinguish whether or not that person's still a valid email address and still engaged. If they are, you can continue marketing to them because hopefully they're, they're back in them, they're back in the game, so to speak. But if you go through the re-engagement program and they're still not engaging with your emails. Unfortunately, we would recommend that you, you do something different with them. You take them out of your existing marketing pot, um, maybe send them a, a far less frequent email program or potentially even take them out of the marketing pot altogether. Do they work? Yes, they work. Um, return path report that 45% of recipients who received a re-engagement email read subsequent emails. So they've managed to fundamentally save 45% uh, or re-engagement programs fundamentally save 45% of the pot in which they're sent to. So here we've got a great example of a re-engagement email from the company FabFitFun. The email reminds the reader of the, all, all the perks of being one of their customers, whilst also recognising that they've been away with the headline, what you've been missing. They've also got in the body copy there, a time-sensitive offer which has a deadline. The most important thing we think about these re-engagement emails is the subject line. Whatever strategy you've been using previously clearly hasn't worked because you have lost that customer um, and you're really trying to get them back. So you need to try something different um, to try and keep them on board. Absolutely. Um, and, and our copywriters always have fun with, with writing subject lines um, for re-engagement emails. Um, we did a re-engagement email for Man City a few years back um, and the subject line for that re-engagement campaign was, have you turned red? Um, for those of you that aren't football fans, um, Man City famously wear blue, so they're known, known as the Blues, um, and their arch rivals, Manchester United, wear red. So we were basically insinuating that they've, they've, turned, um, they've turned red, they've turned to the, the dark side, um, Manchester United. Um, and, you know, we, we managed to re-engage with a, with a great percentage of the recipients who received the email. And we believe mainly down to the impactful subject line. So the next must-do email campaign we would suggest, or automated email campaign, would be the abandoned basket email. Um, we've all experienced these, I'm sure, as, as consumers. It's fundamentally an email sent to someone who has abandoned their online shopping basket or indeed their, their, their cart. Um, they're sometimes referred to as abandoned um, cart email as well. Why, why are they important? Well, Statista um, reported in March 2020 that an astonishing 88% of online shopping orders were abandoned. So, you know, you can do the maths. If you manage to save a, a small percentage of the 88% of um, shopping baskets that are abandoned, you'll be saving a lot of dough. <laughs> you'll be saving a lot of money um, and putting a lot more money on the bottom line. When should you send it? Our recommendation normally to clients is around an hour after that consumer has abandoned their basket. You know, it's a complete myth that people abandon their baskets because they've had a change of mind. Um, it, it could be simply down to the fact that the phones rang um the door you know someone's knocked on the door dinner's ready whatever it happens to be um people abandon the baskets for many different reasons so uh sending a reminder message can be very very beneficial do they work yes they do um omna said 
um, Omnisen, sorry, report that 46% of people who receive an abandoned basket email open that email. 13% um, then go on to click. And of those that click, 35% um, then go on to buy something. Um, and again, this is down to the relevancy. Um, you're sending an email literally within an hour of that person triggering that business rule. So it's an incredibly relevant message at an incredibly relevant time going to an incredibly relevant person. So we've got a fantastic example of one of these abandoned basket emails here from Adidas. Um, not only do we love this email, but Adidas are known within the email marketing industry for these emails. Um, it highlights that the product was being browsed and even tries to use some humor to suggest that it was a problem with the Wi-Fi as to why they didn't go through with the purchase. And then they follow that up with some relevant reviews down at the bottom just to sort of further push the recipient to go ahead with the purchase. Um, one note about these emails though, we would suggest you try not to put incentives as part of this abandoned basket email as you don't want to end up training your recipient to know that if they leave something in a basket for an hour, then at, at, during that hour, they're gonna get some sort of discount and then they'll, they'll continue to use that going forward. Absolutely. On a similar vein, uh, we have the abandoned browser email. Um, again, this is becoming more and more popular with retailers. Um, and it's fundamentally uh, an email that's sent to someone who has abandoned their online browsing. So they visited a website, they visited a product or a product category. Um, they've been on that page for a, a predefined period of time, um, which kind of gives the, the, the retailer the impression that they're interested in that product or product category and they then sent a, uh, a relevant email on the back of it. It's a little bit similar to, you know, emails equivalent to paid search retargeting, um, but much, much cheaper. When should you send it? Like the abandoned basket email, we would recommend that the email is sent within 24 hours um, of the web visit, um, or certainly if, as close to an hour really as possible, but certainly within 24 hours. Do they work? Absolutely, they work. Um, Fresh Relevance report that for every 100 visitors to your website, 39% of people will, or 39 will look at products or services, i.e. browse, and four will go on to buy. Um, so again, if you can change those, those numbers slightly, um, you will see some significant return on investment. So we've got an example here of an abandoned browser email. Um, and we are the first to admit that this probably isn't going to win any awards for design, but having worked with this company, Wind and Vacation Rentals, before, we know that it did work hard converting browsers into bookers. This is a flexible template, so it can have just one of those cottages or multiple. Um, we've not got a single call to action, we've got one per product there, because if you are going to go ahead and book one of these, probably only going to book one at one time, so that sort of makes sense. Fantastic. Nearly there, nearly there, keep with us. Um, so the next must to automated email is the post purchase email. Um, it's similar in many ways um, to the welcome email, but whereas that is welcoming a new customer to your brand, this is an email program that follows up from someone purchasing a product or service, but not necessarily their first product or service. Um, so when should you send it? Well, an order confirmation email should be sent immediately followed by several other emails, um, each with their own call message. So order confirmation first, immediately, and then maybe two or three days later, you hit them with the post-purchase email program. Do they work? Yes, we do an awful lot of this, both with B2B and B2C. Um, and when they're done well, they can, they can do everything. <laughs> they can reduce churn. They can increase engagement. Um, they can increase ROI. So absolutely, if you're not doing this already, we would recommend that you, you look at implementing a, a, a post-purchase post email series. Put my teeth back in. Um, and this is a similar journey to the welcome email program that I presented earlier. Um, you know, Thank you for your recent purchase. Um, post-purchase one, day two or three, provide some value relating to that product or purchase. Um, information, tips, post-purchase two, upsell, cross-sell. Um, is, is there a sort of a, a gadget that you can add to your previously purchased product to make it a better experience? 
post purchase three, um, day six or day seven, leave a review. Um, and then finally, your final email part of this program would be asking friends and family and peers, um, potentially recommending the brand to those people. Muster email, automated email, um, reactivation email. Um, again, not to be mixed up with the previously discussed re-engagement email. The re reactivation email um, is triggered by a person's lack of recent transactional behavior. So they haven't purchased via the email channel um, for a predefined period of time. Um, this is where you need your CRM talking to you because you wouldn't send this email to someone who has purchased via another channel. So you need to make sure that um, they haven't purchased at all via any of element of the marketing mix before sending this email out to them. When should you send it? Um, again, in our view, this would very much depend on the sector, the business. For example, um, a fashion retailer might send a reactivation email to a customer who hasn't purchased something for maybe six months or so, because obviously the, the ticket items are generally of a, of a smaller, uh, lower value. But this would be far too soon uh, for a travel business, a furniture store uh, or a car dealer. But generally, you're not purchasing items of, of, of that type every six months or so. So this is a great example of one of those re reactivation emails from Gap. Um, it's simple but impactful. We decided not to go with any imagery throughout this email, which we think is a good idea given the nature of the email. Because essentially that means if they don't have their images downloaded, if they haven't yet clicked that button that says download images, the recipient will still be able to read this whole email. So they've acknowledged the status of the relationship with the headline, you plus us, we missed that. And then they followed it up with a win back offer of 40% off. Um, and we also like down at the bottom there, they've asked the recipient to update their preferences. Hopefully we can get them back on board with their emails and sort of appreciating what they are receiving. Yep. Two to go. Um, this is what we refer to as a campaign trigger or also known as a telepathic email within Red Sea. Um, and this is a really brilliant email to be introducing to your, to your marketing mix. Um, we do an awful lot of this for various clients. Um, so yeah, let me just talk you through what it means. A telepathic email is basically an email that is triggered by a previous interaction with an email. Um, so a little bit similar to an abandoned browser email, but whereas that is triggered by someone's interactivity with the website, this is triggered by someone's engagement with, with the previous email. So how do they work? Well, if a re email recipient clicks on pod A um, of a newsletter, um, they have kind of indicated that they're interested in the content of pod A. Um, you know, they raise their hand and they fundamentally told you I'm interested. Um, so what we then do is we capture that data and we then send that person um, or, or business um, a single minded email that is solely focused on on the content from pod A. Um, what you do need to do is obviously make sure that that person hasn't fundamentally gone on to purchase or, or, or engage further with the content from pod A. Um, but if they haven't gone on to purchase or, or downloaded whatever the key call to action might have been, um, we would then recommend sending you know, a solus email focused on that particular subject matter. So I'll try to bring that to life here with a bit of a diagram. So imagine that's your monthly newsletter with various different types of content. Your email recipient clicks on the blue call to action for content pod blue. Um, and then maybe within 24 hours, 48 hours, because that person hasn't gone on to make a further um, purchase or, 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 or download, they've gone no further with that transaction. You send them a, a solus message solely focused on, on content blue. Um, as I mentioned, we do an awful lot of this for clients. What we tend to do is pick a, a significant product category or service, um, make sure it works for that particular product category. And then when it does work, which it will, uh, we then roll it out for further products and further product categories. Again, it's something that can just be sat there in the background. Um, you create this suite of, of kind of postcard emails focused on a particular subject matter. 
um, and I just sit there, ticking over, making money, generating engagement. And finally, um, the must do automated email number 10, I think it is, um, is the email sign up email. Um, and this is basically an email that is triggered by a person subscribing to your email newsletters um, via a form on your website or via another method, um, social, whatever it happens to be. When you should, should you send this email? Well, you send it immediately after sign up. Um, you know, I'm always amazed whenever I sign up to an email program, and I do an awful lot of that because obviously I'm interested in email marketing. I'm almost, I'm always absolutely shocked when I don't get a welcome email or an email sign up email. Um, they're so easy to set up, and they're absolutely crucial uh, because again, it's the first impression. First impressions count. Yeah, so here we've got a great example that we love from the BBC. Um, they've tried to put their recipient first with the headline, emails made for you. And within the body copy there, they outline what to expect next, including when to expect future emails. And they also direct the recipient back to their preferences with the line, you're in control. We're really big fans of email navigations at Red Sea because we know that they get clicks. So you'll notice the one that's just gone off screen there is a big sort of image navigation. We really love that because it's sort of really clear as to where to go and what to do. And the final tip from me, you should definitely subscribe to the BBC emails because they have some great content and some really good examples of best practice. Brilliant. Thank you, Abby. So in summary, um, automated emails. Well, they make money whilst you sleep. So what is not to like? But they also help with productivity. So they fundamentally save you money also. Um, I hope I've proven that they work. Um, they do generally create better open rates, better click-through rates, better conversion rates. And that happens because you're sending a more relevant email message to a more relevant person at a more relevant time. Um, what do you need to create a, an email automation program? Well, you need data. You need good customer data, accurate customer data. Um, nothing's worse than sending an automated email that is actually dictated by incorrect data because that's not doing anyone any favours. Um, and you'll also need marketing automation software such as your MailChimp, um, Campaign Monitor, DotMailer, whoever it happens to be. There are thousands, literally thousands of, of um, marketing automation software out there. Have fun with the creative. Um, as I mentioned earlier, quite often you're trying to reverse a trend, um, a downward trend sometimes with re-engagement, reactivation. So you're wanting to be creative. You're wanting to stand out. Um, but quite often with automated emails, the creativity is, is almost secondary to a certain extent because the email is so relevant. You over, almost overcome that hurdle. So just be mindful of, of updates. So make sure that you're not overcomplicating your templates because um, quite, quite often you will have to update your template, um, maybe based on season um, or whatever it happens to be. Um, so don't make it too complicated. And don't run before you can walk. Obviously we've highlighted maybe 10 or so automated programs here. Don't try to do them all at once. Um, pick one or two that you think is gonna add the most value to your business or maybe is, is, are, they, are they easiest to implement? Because um, they will all add value of some type to your business. Um, maybe do one at a time um, until you reach you know, a, a full robust automated email program. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. That's it from Abby and I. We do hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, we have two further virtual midweek masterclasses to come. Um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, but please feel free to take a look at various recordings on our YouTube page for all of our previous virtual midweek masterclasses. We're covering subjects such as search marketing, general marketing, copywriting, direct mail. So please uh, knock yourself out and yeah, hopefully take advantage of uh, lockdown learning. Um, take a look at some of our previous videos. So thank you very much for attending. Um, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.